All right, we've looked at separable differential equations. The next step is to look at linear differential equations. Now, like a lot of ODEs, this particular form has certain um, characteristics for its solution method. Now, like I've said in, in earlier um, classes, one of the motivations for studying ODEs is their applications to modeling. Now, the linear, a linear ODE has the, a particular form. You've got a first order derivative dy dx plus a function of x times y equals some other function of x. And the unknown here is y, which is a function of x. So what we want to do, like most equations, is solve them and find the unknown function, in this case, the unknown function y. Now, when I'm doing these problems, the, I can break down the li linear differential equations to one idea from calculus. It's the product rule. The product rule for differentiation. That's all linear differential equations the solution method uses. The product rule. That's it. Okay? So, essentially what we do is we force this left-hand side to be the derivative of a product, okay? In, in particular, to the derivative of a special product involving the unknown function y and a so-called integrating factor function, okay? So that's, ba that, that's basically it. So let me show you what I mean using this specific example. We're asked to solve this linear ODE. Here, p of x, this um, coefficient function would be 1 on x. The q of x would be x squared. Okay, so what I'm going to do is make that left-hand side the derivative of a special product. And in particular, that product involves the unknown function y and a so-called integrating factor function. So let me show you what I mean. Let me show you what I mean. So consider this so-called integrating factor function. So I'm just going to call it u. Okay? So you can see all I've done there is I've taken the exponential and it's um, got the integral of this coefficient function, function up here. Okay, for our investigation, p of x is just 1 on x. Now, if I integrate 1 on x, I'll get something like logarithm, the natural log. And for this particular problem, I'm only interested in the solution y equals a function of x for x positive. So that helps me compute this. So if I integrate 1 on x, then it's just e to the log absolute x. And because x is positive, I can remove the absolute value signs. And e to the log, they're just um, inverse functions, so it's just x here. OK, well, why have I done that? Well, what I can do now is multiply both sides of my ODE through with this integrating factor. So let's try that and, and I'll show you how the left hand side collapses to the derivative of, of a special product. So let's call this a star. Okay, so so I'm just, I'm just multiplying both sides by x. Okay, now x is positive, so I can cross off those. And the question is, this left-hand side, I claim that it's the derivative of a special product. 
Well, what is that product? Well, this left-hand side will just be the derivative of x times y. Okay, the derivative of the product x times y. So, so if I write it like this, okay, so if you differentiate this, remember y is a function of x, you'll get x to y dx plus y. Okay, just by the product rule. So how does that help us? Well, I can integrate both sides of that bottom line and then rearrange for the solution y. Okay, so I'm just using the product rule there. All right, so let's integrate. So I'm going to integrate on the left, integrate on the right. So when I integrate, I'll just get yx on the left-hand side. When I integrate over here, I'll get 1 quarter x to the power 4 plus a constant of integration. And now all I need to do is make y the subject. So I'll just divide by x. So let's just take that x over here. I'll get... Something like that. Okay, now C is an arbitrary constant. I don't know what it is. So that's what I would call the general form of the solution. Okay, now in general, just multiplying both sides of your DE by the integrating factor will always give you the derivative on the left hand side, it will always give you the derivative of this product, y, the unknown function times the integrating factor. Okay, you see how I've got x and x? Okay, that will always be the integrating factor multiplying through by your y there. So that will work in general. Okay, so if we have the extra information, y, uh, when x equals 1, y equals 0, determine the constant. Okay, so let's have a look at that. So all I want to do now is the initial condition yields the following. Well, when x equals 1, all I need to do is go up here and plug in x equals 1. So I'm going to get a quarter plus c. And then I just rearrange this part and I'll get c equals minus 4. Uh, sorry, minus 1 quarter. So our final answer... I just go up to here and replace C with minus one quarter. Okay, so this is known as a particular solution. This here with the, with the constant of integration is known as a general solution. Okay, so uh, an important point there is firstly recognizing your differential equation really is a linear differential equation, bringing in the integrating factor, multiplying through, and then integrating. Okay? So what most, what most um, solutions do, they start with, with this, and then they go straight to that okay, after computing the integrating factor. You don't really have to put this part in. Okay? You can go straight to that line if you want. All right, let's have a look at the bigger picture. Here's a step-by-step -step analysis of the solution method. The underlying process is the product rule for differentiation. You're sort of just collapsing a left-hand side down to the derivative of a special product. So you want to construct the integrating factor, you want to multiply both sides of your ODE by the integrating factor and collapse the left-hand side down to the derivative of a special product the derivative of the unknown function y times the integrating factor. Integrate both sides, solve for y, and then if you know an initial condition, then you can form your constant of integration. So here are some examples for you. Questions? Yes. Uh, when it comes to the integration factor, is there a reason to ignore the 
Oh, that's an excellent question. Oop. That's an excellent question. Okay, so there was a question, and you need to give this the thumbs up because it's an excellent question. Why didn't I put an integration factor? So I'm integrating 1 on x. Why didn't I put a, a constant of integration here? Okay, you could. That, that, that's correct, right? You could put a constant of integration here. It would still be correct, right? And let's say you followed that constant of integration all the way through. When you rearrange down here, from this step you know, to this step, when you just sort of bring this integrating factor to the other side, the, any constant of integration is going to cancel. Okay? So you could keep it if you wanted to, but it's not going to help you. And it goes back to what you said. If you differentiate this, if you have a plus C or something in here, you're still going to get the same, um, the same thing. So having a, a constant of integration is still correct, but it's not necessary. And furthermore, it probably, it probably um, makes it more complicated than you need to. That's a really good question.